So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this workshop on marketing. So please be seated. So it's been uh, some years now that I've been uh, uh, been uh, the animator for this uh, workshop. I, as, as I always say, I have the best speakers of all the workshops. I'm sure it's going to be a great afternoon. I hope you had a good meal. Uh, I'm, I'm at the Early Mel's uh, Technical Service uh, uh, body. I'm a member of the conference uh, uh, committee, so I'll be your uh, animator for this workshop. This afternoon, we'll have the opportunity to hear uh, excellent speakers who will uh, be speaking about uh, trends and consumers' habits. First uh, speaker, a colleague uh, from Olimel, Mr. David Poirier, has a degree, an MBE at uh, HEC, University of Montreal. He has various uh, expertise. He has worked six years as a research professional and consumer at Ad Hoc Research and Morrison Course. He also was involved in product development for that company, which uh, um, meant he had to taste many types of beers. He kept that taste for beer afterwards. And after nine years in uh, beer, he decided to go into bacon. So, uh, and chicken wings. At Oli Mel, he's in charge of marketing. He's been there for six years for La Fleur, Flamingo Oli Mel. He supervises the Oli and L. Uh, they're passionate about uh, cold uh, uh, meat. And for two years, he's the director in innovation and development for uh, processed. Uh, Product. So uh, David, in his free time, likes cooking, as you may very well understand. He is himself influenced by numerous marketing trends, and he'll be talking about all that in his uh, conference. So please let us greet my colleague, David Poirier. Thank you, Sylvain. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today. Welcome to this uh, conference in which we will explore how uh, marketing influences our uh, decisions in terms of food. So I have structured uh, this uh, presentation in two sections, uh, after which we'll have a conclusion. First section, we'll give you a few tools, of uh, a few examples of tools with which uh, marketers influences our choices, and then we'll see the big changes that will affect the relation we have with uh, pork meat. And after that, I'll have some avenues as to how we could use marketing methods to face uh, these changes. The facts that I'll be talking about uh, come from the numerous uh, tools that we have access to in uh, all email. I'll be talking about our uh, members' uh, community, 8,000 Canadians ready to participate in studies in Olimel in exchange of information before the others. I talked about this today because I made a study exclusively for the pork show, because, and, and then my results are really exclusive, and I'll be ready to answer any questions after my conference. First section, marketing influences our choices. Uh, first, who here think that their decisions are strongly influenced by publicity? Well, well uh, quite a few. You are aware of your reality, because often I have had numerous uh, discussion groups, and I've heard that thousands of times, you know, you know, well, you know, publicity, it's not for me, not influenced by that. If that were true, do you think that income, uh, Facebook, uh, 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 advertisement uh, uh, revenues wouldn't go up as it does every year. Well, we think we are rational, but most of our choices are based on our emotions and based on our perceptions. A percep uh, demonstration of which is this. Here are some tools used by marketers to influence you through the four classical P's, price, the place, promotion, and the product or P's of marketers. It is used by marketers to create a desire. When the work is well done, consumers buy the, uh, this product uh, to satisfy his needs, and he's happy. So the first of these tools is the price. The price is a signal of quality of the product. We expect that a $3 wine, 
uh, uh, well, the $25 wine is better than the $3 one. Why? Because it's made with better ingredients, better care, better know-how. It's a rational conclusion. But the price is in link also with our emotions. Let us take an example that we all know about, $10 and 9.99. It's a thousand difference. Emotionally, it's quite different. It's $9 for us, $9.99. It's an example we all know of. Other more interesting examples, luxury items, Louis Vuitton bag, top notch. It's a way to indicate that we are successful, that we have money. It's a big part of what we buy in paying so much for a product, for something that we would have substitute for that would be cheaper. Uh, well, the price in itself is a signal. But is what is even more uh, interesting here, it is the fact that the, f the price can have an effect on the performance of the product. Some studies were carried out saying that a, uh, an aspirin pill, if it's five cents, it functions not as well as if it were sold 50 cents, because the expectations are linked to the price. People paid for something, they're expecting something. The other example that I will present to you is a cake sold at $15, same same cake sold at fifty-five dollars. That is a degustation. People don't have to pay. We offer them the cake and we ask them to give feedback. Systematically, people say that the fifty-five dollar cake tastes better. It's not. It's not like when you buy an expensive car, you paid a lot. You want to to, to look for the good size. They didn't need to commit themselves. They just had to taste, and they measure in the brain. What are the expectations whereby the taste will be felt better? And it really tastes better. So we should remember that. Sometimes we shouldn't be uh, afraid uh, about selling our products uh, more expensive. Uh, the second P is place. It refers to the distribution and placing of the product. Placing means to whom you direct your product. Vegetal burger, if it's sold in the vegetarian uh, <clears throat> section, it doesn't say the same respect with respect to its price as if it were sold in the, the food, in the meat department. Bacon, pre-cooked bacon, if it's sold in the bacon department, <clears throat> well, we're going to think about bacon, but we can think of other types of use. Uh, racks with uh, nearby tomatoes, we create new opportunities. It's quite interesting also in terms of manipulation. Take the example of a form of donation. If I ask you to uh, give for a trip for my daughter in Africa with her school next year, and I, maybe you would be ready to give me $5 instead of 25 But I could influence you. Uh, for um, more people, I give $25 if I give a third choice, a bigger amount. If, well, 25 looks lower. It's an effect that is quite clear. If we, we need points of reference before making decisions, uh, there are ways to, uh, as to how we could use other products to sell other products, so they would look better and cheaper. Promotion. It includes advertisement, public relations, sales, and promotions in store. Let's talk about promotion at large today. I want to uh, show to you how marketers can manipulate you. Big lesson in promotion is that we're not good in maths. Not very many people here uh, really enjoyed his or her maths uh, courses. When we put pressure, feeling of emergency, we're even worse in terms of our maths. So limited time offer is, is a good example of that. Demonstration. What? Promotion attracts you more, 75% uh, discount on an item at 11.94 or 5% on something priced 179.99. People say, uh, studies show that you make a detour for the first but not the second, but uh, in both cases you save $9. But we find the first one much more interesting. Another example, it's not only four percentages, dollars also count. To the left, does that look better for the golf club or to the right for the BMW. Most people will say the left, the Gulf, but rationally speaking, it's the same $200. Emotionally, it's not the same. Another way to manipulate people is to surprise them. The three offers that you see here, it's the same. To the right is even a bit more, but 
to the right. The first time it uh, it was proposed, it functioned much better because people were not used to see that. And one dollar looks small, but two for one, you have to make a mathematical calculation. So that's, you must surprise people, and you must play with the mathematical capacity, which is quite limited in most people. Now let's talk about the product, the fourth P. Product, I mean here the product itself, its look, the ingredients, where it comes from, all these characteristics, but also how it is packaged. And finally, what do we say about the product or the allegations? All this together creates a perception. And all these tools we can manipulate to, ha to create an impression on people. For time uh, uh, reasons, I'll talk about only these aspects that I have underlined. But there are examples for each of, th of these uh, dimensions. Let's talk about ingredients now. We could think that it is something rational, a description of what we have in the product. But the fact is, the following example will show you how we can influence the perception in choosing what ingredients that we pick and how we describe them. So we asked our panel to classify a series of ingredients on an axis from natural to chemical not good for your health and good for your health. It's not scientific. We're talking about perceptions here. And we have four squares. What we want is to have ingredients that are perceived in the top left square or box. The results are quite clear. We monosodium glutamate, it's uh, top right and pork, good news, top left. So some ingredients are considered not good, and we can change them if we uh, manipulate a little bit. Sugar. When it's sugar cane, it's good for your health. All of a sudden, same thing for salt and sea salt. It's not exactly uh, the same ingredients, but the price difference can be worth it. Aroma, a natural aroma, as soon as it is not artificial, it is natural. So you should say so, because look at the effect. It, it becomes a health product. Uh, uh, the modified milk ingredient and powdered milk, uh, um, it's like me. I'm David, but I could also be Mr. Poirier, but put it where it looks better. Baking sodas, same thing. It's uh, If I put little cow, it would be even better, but I wasn't <laughs> given the permission to do that. But we have to remember that measuring, uh, if you can measure that, it's worth it. Take the time. Maybe there are ways of saying things that it will uh, be uh, and do something more positive. Now, in terms of packaging colors, the color of packaging. What is it for? We want to highlight something in the uh, in the store. We want to communicate the brand, but the promise of the product as well. And there are much more possibilities uh, than what I have here. I just put a few on the screen. Each color has a story. Gold, black is up quality upscale. Red and yellow, it's cheap, but it could also create hunger. Uh, pale color, less salt, less fat. Uh, blue, uh, less salt, uh, less fat. It would be, uh, it would be good, uh, but don't put that on duck with bacon. It wouldn't fit. I will ask you a question. Let's say you're in charge of developing a natural product. What color would you use here? If we look at natural selection, product number one in cold meat in Canada, it, they used the beige color. It's not by coincidence. There are some green and some brown. It's all coherent with respect to what we want to say. But it's not a very striking color in the store, of course. But it expresses well the promise of the product. If they decided to use the white, which is another possibility to show simplicity, it works. But maybe it's less convincing. But if they say gold really looks like quality, my quality my, is my product is quality, it would look as such. And me, then I change and I call it premium selections. All of a sudden, gold it takes another meaning. Uh, uh, that's me with my PowerPoint, of course. But you can imagine how a, 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 a graphism company could uh, come up with something similar. Green, 
Well, if you take a green like this one, but it's neon, it's quite ugly, and it does not communicate anything natural, but use the same color in uh, energy beverage, it looks like energy, so it's different. So uh, it's our job. We, we take, we spend days thinking about colors. That's why we do it. Now, allegations of products. Allegation is what we say about a product, right? So there are thousands. I'm going to show three to you first. The local uh, aspect. If uh, we have as many more measures of what's local as you may want, but it comes back very frequently. And it's also an element uh, for which people are ready to pay a premium. So that's interesting. The good side of this is that local, it doesn't mean 23.5 kilometers from home. It, for Canadians, it means Canada. For Quebec, it means Quebec. So that gives us a certain flexibility. And we have to understand also that uh, locality is interesting because it's appreciated by millennials, families, and a household income of more than $100,000. That's important to know. Second allegation is what is clean label. Well, no good expression in, in French, but uh, clean label. I think we all know what we're talking about. So it's an ingredient more limited in number. This trend, people thought it was a, just a trend, but it's a, it's a profound trend that will remain in Canada and elsewhere. And not only that, it is especially true with the millennials. Many studies indicate that the more a product has a added value in the clean label uh, scale, uh, more growth it will have. Regular, zero, no clean label at all, and durable, ethical, uh, it, it grows more. We have to understand the higher in the scale, the smaller the market. So we have to find our place in this uh, market. But cr the growth is there, no doubt. That's what I had to say about that. So let's go now to the aspect that is quite striking. This is very much demanded, but people are not necessarily ready to pay for it. So what do we do? We have to, it's, it's not simple necessarily, but we, what we have to do is to find allegations that won't be too costly, but that will be seen as with a value. The reason why uh, people are not so ready to pay, it's not because they don't think it's worth it. It's just because they have less discretionary money. Millennials, while well, they have to pay for uh, kids and they don't have very, very big salaries yet, so that's one of the reasons. The other factor limiting uh, the clean label interest is that we have a lot of it, a lot of allegations of clean label with asterisk and there's uh, sometimes we wonder, is that true? Uh, transparency is not always there. So what I suggest is to have allegations based on fact and uh, third-party accreditations. For example, if you're gluten-free, you're better off with a foreign uh, accreditation. It's better than declaring it yourself. Uh, for example, people doing their very, very good job. Pork uh, in Quebec, it's a local product third-party accreditation and factual accreditation. Good job. So it was a quick uh, overlook of uh, the products. Second part on the changes, something, some things that will affect us in the years to come. Uh, I give you a very general uh, overview here. Three great uh, trends, market fragmentation, changing perception of meat, and socio-demographic changes that will affect us as well. First, the market fragmentation. The market that I uh, represented to the left by a gray circle, the new market to the right, it grows. But the generics, the non-differentiated -differ -differ product diminishes. The growth come f comes from the smaller segments, more characterized with particular specifics, uh, with uh, specific needs as well. First thing to remember. Second is that the perception of meat changes. Meat was often considered as the basis of uh, our food industry. Uh, today, meat is still important, but we have more questions around uh, meat. We hear about it every day, and we see that more and more in numerous movements that I'll talk about. The, um, we have a downward consumer 
trend, consumer per capita, we can see that the consumption fluctuates uh, when we, uh, in absolute numbers, it uh, increases, but by person per capita, it diminishes a little bit. But red meat is declining more, and white meat, chicken in particular, is growing. It's, in fact, meat number one per capita in Canada. Where does this come from? Well, many studies indicate that we, many people say they want to eat less meat, and this group of persons, and not necessarily the vegans, uh, are in growth. Who has a vegan in their family? So you see, it evolves, it, it progresses. Who in uh, the rooms have heard or would like to eat less meat? So that's what, exactly what I was saying. So these people are flexitarian. There are many definitions, but uh, but that's the one that I'm going to use today. So it's uh, we we have more vegan products, but it's not because the vegans themselves are more numerous. It's just because people want to eat less meat. Why is that so? Well, there are many reasons that come more often. Let's look at three of them. I'm going to say to you how we can react to these reasons. First, health perception. It's not always uh, right. And we hear that meat is linked to cardiac diseases, obesity, and even cancer, a bit less so. But with the publication of the World Health Organization, uh, we heard a lot about it. The other point is the ecological impact uh, perception. It is a perception as to uh, meat not being good for the environment. And if we want to avoid the ecological catastrophes, first thing to do is to reduce one's meat c consumption. It's a discourse if you follow uh, the news that you will hear often. But it is something that will uh, only increase, in particular with the uh, concerns, uh, ever-growing concerns of the youth with respect to uh, the environment. Uh, low laws, uh, uh, for example, now uh, say they will diminish their print uh, by 30 percent, not only meat, but there are some efforts in that direction, for sure. One of the reasons why we identify meat as being a tool to reduce our impact on the planet is that eating less meat is easy to communicate solution and easy to implement with not too many sacrifices. Also, it is trendy. In Hollywood, people talk about it all the time. So it's a big move. I will test you who here would think it would be easier to cut one meat meal a, a week than to eliminate one uh, journey by car to work. Yes, so we must understand it's an easy sacrifice, easy to sell. But uh, it, we believe it might be simplistic, maybe. And as port producers, maybe we, we could use some marketing uh, tools here. Uh, I'm not an ecologist, but I have looked at some data. And uh, whatever info you take, but uh, beef and goat meat is always worse, and pork is always looked at as being better. Uh, so in general, pork is better than beef. That's what we should remember. Could that represent a uh, an opportunity of placing for pork, we could talk about it, but there is definitely something to do. Last point, social acceptability. There are many people who really like the taste of meat, the satisfying feeling of it, but some are not at ease with the fact that if you want to have meat, you must you need some animals that you must breed and then kill. The other elements here is with uh, urbanization and mechanization of uh, uh, animal uh, care it doesn't help. The first answer to this is an evolution of the meat offer in terms of uh, the uh, welfare, uh, the type of meat, etc. Second uh, uh, answer is animal-free meat. It imitates uh, meat. Or insects or animals, but in our mind, it's not the same as m mammals. And uh, lab meat, it sounds like uh, sci-fi, but many people do work on this very seriously. All of these approaches try to give the pleasure of meat. We, we 
we realize that meat equals pleasure. Nobody uh, disagrees with that, but without uh, killing animals. But last point is demographic changes. I will highlight three. First, aging of the population. What we have to remember is that it is particularly evident in, in Quebec. Uh, older uh, persons are more concerned with their health, and they want to eat less red meat in particular. And this group would like to see the meat before buying it. We have to remember that when we talk about the other groups. The second trend, smaller households, is that households are smaller, and portions that we sell should be smaller. Often already prepared, we have to expect this to be more and more frequent. And finally, millennials will influence our market because millennials uh, is uh, as important a group as the baby boomers. But they have ethical considerations in their purchases. They're twice as much uh, uh, vegetarians, and they don't feel competent to choose, manipulate, or cook their meat. They want us to do it for them. So we have seen that people choose on, based on their emotions and perceptions, and that we can have a certain influence on their uh, choices. We have seen some changes that will have uh, an impact on uh, pork consumption in particular. So what do we do? It may sound somewhat uh, preoccupying, but we do have tools to help us out of this. Uh, um, so I'll give you a few good news. First good news is that proteins are trendy. Products that are sold of, with a lot of proteins are growing, and more and more products indicate their contents in proteins. People look for proteins in a very simplistic manner because they think that it will make them stronger or thinner. For good news is that protein, uh, meat is a very good source of protein. We don't talk about it enough. We could talk about it more. And the other aspect is that for a third of the population, a uh, source of protein is very important, and meat is the strongest source of proteins for most of the market. Yet, it is also true in uh, the market share, 93 percent, but meat is still growing there in absolute uh, numbers, but it is lower than the growth of vegetal proteins. When we talk about substitutes, uh, products made with vegetables but imitating uh, meat, the growth is 10 times uh, bigger. It's a small market, but it grows very quickly. Why? Well, a fifth of the Canadians think that meat proteins are more healthy. Vegetal uh, proteins are more, would be more healthy, but uh, but it, we, meat and proteins are more complete, more digest. It would be uh, to our advantage to make that known. Good news number two is that aesthetics is uh, the promise of the good taste of uh, meat is inspirational. People like and the, the, the taste and the look of meat. And that's why we have a lot of analogous products of meat. And that's why they adopt this uh, aesthetics and they, 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 and they actually take the, the, the name uh, of, of meat. Uh, chicken, for example, in Europe, uh, chicken, false chicken products. Uh, and uh, they, they have the aesthetics of a butcher shop. It's a bit absurd when you think about it, uh, <laughs> vegetarian butcher shop. but. But uh, but uh, it shows the trend, really. So the consequence of this news is that the meat market is still very significant, $23 billion in Canada, 13 times more than the vegetal proteins. So we will not uh, see uh, uh, the stop of meat uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, for we, I'm talking about meat, but meat is not pork. What I'm showing here is a lot of words. We do that. What is the first word word that comes to mind when I say meat? Uh, I could have done that with the community of members. What came up was this: steak, beef, red are very present. The, the bigger the word, more often it was heard. So you can see that meat, in fact, equals beef, steak. And when people say we want to eat less meat, what we realize, what they want to say is that they want to reduce their consumption in red meat, in particular beef. So it's not all animal proteins that are affected by this. Maybe pork could 
the pork industry could influence these trends for to make sure that they're not associated to that trend, I can say to you that it is possible. If we look at the same results to the left, meat, uh, meat to the left and pork to the right, if we, uh, if we regroup that in different themes, we see that with respect to meat, we think about red meat. When we think about pork, we talk about products, bacon, ham, all these things. So the word pork is more linked to a recipe, to good taste, and less to a red meat. We could make this exercise on Google. Uh, Google Images is a content aggregator, so it basically shows what are the most popular uh, products for research. So if you uh, put in meat, <coughs> I don't know why we cut the sides of the screen, but anyway, to the left is meat and to the right is red meat. The colors of these two researchers, average color is quite similar. But if we put pork, the color in general is much paler uh, compared to white meat. So there's something with respect to color of the meat. And we're going to see how, how this can affect us. The reason for this is that red meat, it's the strongest part of the market compared to the white meat. The, uh, on the other side, white meat is considered more healthy because it is seen as less fat. So the notion of fat is very important here. Anecdote, uh, men prefer red meat and women seem to prefer white meat, it's often for health reasons. That's what I wanted to say here. The good news, number five, is that we can influence people's perception. I tried to demonstrate that at the beginning of my speak. I, give you, I will give you some examples as to how uh, is perceived quality, protein, health, and tasty and technological, so uh, ecological uh, aspect. So how can we influence people's perception on these five aspects the, with the color, with uh, the, the cuts, and uh, the origin of pork? So let's look uh, at this with the uh, automatic uh, association. So if I say a word, here to the left is what the words are for pork. What is the first image that comes to mind when I say Quebec pork? Look at the difference. To the left, we have various cuts. To the right, we have quality, uh, benefits, tasty. So the Quebec label has changed all the effective perception linked to that. If you have Quebec, pork could say so. We have seen uh, at noon the tremendous work that has been done in the past year, it really works because it's not in the same place in our mind when we hear Quebec pork. So let's look at all the other dimensions that I just mentioned. Let's think about protein content. I have used 20 elements that are representative, some with a lot of protein, some less, more healthy, less healthy uh, icons of all these dimensions, 21 of them with four dimensions. If we look at this now, the proportion of very high protein content, people who said, yes, that's ha that has a lot of protein from the top to the, the less. Each of the four uh, charts uh, function the same way. So we can see the first thing is that red meat is seen as the number one item with more proteins, uh, very, with uh, beans just after. And spiruline and meat light uh, plant products are seen as with less proteins. But when you make a ranking of the actual content, that's the artistic version of it, we can see that uh, uh, spiruline and meat like plant products have a lot of protein, but people don't know that. So people don't know that, they don't think necessarily it has this content. The other thing is that we can see that broccoli. Pork is right in the middle. Pork, if you call it Quebec pork, it changed quite a few things with respect to the taste. But in terms of protein, it doesn't change much. But what is interesting is that bacon and Italian sausages is concerned as having less protein than the broccoli, while it has much more, like seven times more. So we could uh, highlight that a bit more. 
we see that the consumers are, do not know about this. If we look the uh, tasty aspect of things, pork uh, ranks uh, something similar to red meat, 50 to 56. But if we say Quebec pork, consistent with what I said earlier, we gain eight points. So there's really an effect in the qualification when it says Quebec pork. In terms of processed uh, uh, food, we see the performance of bacon. If it was with Quebec pork, it would probably be higher. And we can also say, reassuring certainly, in terms of taste, tofu, vegetal products imitating food, the spiruline, uh, insect at the bottom, uh, it's seen as not very tasty, just maybe because they don't know about it. But it's not tomorrow that people will run to uh, buy at the store some uh, uh, crickets. And uh, so we should be quite reassured. If we want to take talk about the tasty aspect of pork, I had to make some, some choices. It's, it's a selection. I took the pork chops and the filet, uh, tenderloin. You can see that the tenderloin is really the icon as tasty. So if we put Quebec pork tenderloin, it would probably be even higher. If we take the ecology perception, it's another demonstration that would be to the pork's advantage with respect to red meat. Quebec pork has seven points more. But Quebec pork, the local aspect, adds nine points to this, much more than red meat. So uh, we just observed uh, that it was coming from Quebec and the ranking went up. We can also observe in this list that plants are seen as more ecological than meat in general. But white meat is seen as more ecological and fish and turkey. And the higher the process level, less healthy and less ecological it is seen. It's always important to, to think about that. Last element, healthy perception. It's quite clear with Quebec pork, 13 points higher than red meat. 29 to 42. If we at 11 points more for Quebec pork. So half the population thinks it's good f for your health, while red meat was around 30 uh, percent. And technically, we can see that some do think that uh, pork is red meat. So, um, so talk about uh, the uh, species more than the color of the meat is more important. What is quite clear also, more than pork, more than uh, pork chops. So it's a tenderloin. So highly processed products are seen as less healthy. Beyond meat, etc., it's very low on the list. So it's a quite strong uh, limitative factor for these products. So suggestions of action, talk about. So in conclusion, we should talk about pork rather than meat. Should talk about Quebec pork rather than just pork. You should talk about noble aspects, low fat, talk about the taste and nutritional quality, especially protein. We don't do that enough. We should talk about, we should avoid uh, talking about red meat. Specific uh, hints for producers continue the PR momentum, commitments, economic advantages, job regions. I like the product characteristics that are well perceived protein, local, taste, and the natural aspect talk about pork more than meat, and continue to limit the ecological footprint as much as possible, improve animal well-being. And we must think also, it can become very technical, all these uh, dimensions, but people fighting against that use sens sensational language that are quite effective on the networks, but you should uh, we should also use very efficient terminology. So I think we should also be more uh, active in terms of uh, our, our product. Regarding manufacturers, we should continue to improve the offer, uh, the ingredients. We should use words such as nature, simple, well-known short words, uh, fresh designation and handcraft. But don't do that for this to be more expensive. Regarding the retailers, we should capitalize on the uneven perception of taste, flavor of meat and its looks, the aesthetics. We should remind people that meat is an excellent source of protein, promote buying locally, 
and how to cook. Uh, Market uh, 21 in uh, the US, well, it's all there, easy to use with recipes, uh, vegetables you can buy with it, and sauces. So you have all your kit there, all ready to use. It's, it's easy to use. Uh, you should talk about, think about segmented offers, millennials versus boomers, single households, and take into account the specificities of human perception in your listening, pricing, promotion, and planogram decisions. But also, it applies to all. No magical recipes. You must test, measure, adjust, measure, implement, until uh, uh, you get the wanted results. So that's my presentation. I thank you very much for your presentation. I don't know if you have any result, uh, any questions. Thank you, David. Yes, we are short on time. We have some time for questions. Anybody has questions, please go to the microphone. Introduce yourself. Joliette. Oui, bon. <laughs> Geneviève Bertium, TVQ. I'm just wondering, with respect to the new trend that we see bulk uh, grocery stores, what? how do you see marketing with respect to this trend? It's a good question. I know that the impression of these uh, grocery stores is based on local, less ecological impact because less packaging. But uh, with respect to the branding, it's a bit more complicated. I don't have any research result to help you with that. I think that the brands, the local uh, aspect could be uh, on our favor, too. Any other question? I would have one. It goes a bit beyond your presentation, but in the allegations that you referred to, you didn't talk much about with the no antibiotics, animal welfare, uh, as regards the allegations, uh, uh, bread with uh, care, etc. I showed in one slide there were uh, various debates, uh, the ethical aspects. Well, that's where we have most growth in the market, but we must understand more it's specialized more the segments are little and more the growth is high. So yes, there is a demand for that. But what we see, one of the no antibiotics people are not necessarily ready to pay more uh, as uh, natural or no uh, preservative, because it's confusing a bit in people's mind. But all this communicates. So as a transformer and, and producer, we must take these perception. Um, so there's a market for that. There are networks and consumers, but it's not the bulk of the market as such. One other question, very quickly. Yes, if for need, I would like to um, have your opinion, your perception as regards uh, as, uh, as, as the lady has just mentioned, because you talked about baby boomers and the youth. And if we look at the, the retail market regarding uh, processing, there many chains are starting. Uh, are, are, uh, uh, we see that the marketing of uh, the sliced meat is growing uh, all the time. So the message is a bit different there. Uh, baby boomers are uh, invited to come with their Tupperware, but the transformers at the same time increase uh, the market of uh, the sliced uh, meat in the industry. What's your perception with respect to that? Well, as I was saying earlier, there's a fragmentation of the market, and retailers want to be seen as good citizens, good corporate citizens. I think that our job as uh, people from the pork industry is to show uh, where the products come from. We do have arguments in our favor. We can play that game. The question of the Tupperware as such, I'm not sure it's very recent, uh, this movement. We have no data yet. But personally, I'm wondering as to if this could not create problems in terms of health, celebrity that could play against it. But it's a personal opinion. I have no data. But I'm sure they made some studies before starting to do that. But I don't have enough data to help you with that. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, David, for this excellent presentation.
I would ask you to go to my left to uh, sit down by Geneviève, who will give you a little uh, gift, a token of our uh, gratitude.